I'm wrestling with a Titanic restaurant sinking into a financial black hole. Right now, yeah, yeah. the granary is the biggest shit hole in Hampshire. The clueless owner's an entrepreneur, not a restaurateur. This is how I run my fucking restaurant. It's not true. That's why you're in this shit, you no, fucking fat idiot. There's a couple of young offenders in the kitchen. Witness intimidation, assault. And the head chef is more like a parole officer who just can't cope. I really can't be bothered. I don't like this and I don't want to do it, mate. Why do you walk out? Why are you asking me? We're in rural Hampshire, where I've just bought a really nice, tiny country cottage. And from a chef's point of view, here, you have some of the most amazing produce anywhere in Britain. So I'm really looking forward to a nice, laid-back British country lunch. I'm heading for the Granary, a huge 200-seater restaurant owned by businessman and property entrepreneur Nigel Nedu. He thinks his glam upmarket eatery should be earning him a fortune. To my mind, we've invested in all the right things. It's, it's a beautiful place. The, the quality of the food is good. We've got great chefs. You know, I'm at a bit of a loss, to be honest, to, to understand why the place isn't busier. Nigel's dream project is failing, and it's an all too familiar tale in my trade. Running a successful business doesn't mean you can run a restaurant. I've found myself in the thick of it, really, and just basically doing the best I can. Well, you do feel vulnerable. I mean, it's like, who do you turn to? You can only keep digging deeper and deeper yourself. But, you know, I suppose it was, uh, well, that's why we turned to Gordon. Here we are. Despite hemorrhaging four grand a week, Nigel likes the finer things in life, and he's offered to show me the area. Are you a good pilot? I'm not bad. I'm not bad, mate. Tell you about the area where we are here. Uh -huh. Gordon, this is a it's a very nice, very affluent area. Uh -huh. There seems to be so many swimming pools here. Nigel convinced himself the wealthy Hampshire locals would flock to a flash exclusive dining club. So he opened one in 2003, and it cost up to two grand to join. For the first night, Nigel invited celebrity guests like Jordan. Yeah. Just for we thought we'd cracked it. The launch was so incredibly well attended and everyone was so excited by what was happening. The feedback was, wow, this is the most amazing place. We're all going to be coming here. And then uh, they, none of them did. When Nigel's Playboy project went bust, he dropped the joining fee. Reopened as the granary, but it was too late. Its local reputation was shot to pieces. Just down here to the left here, Gordon, this is the restaurant. OK. The, the kind of cream building there with the nice, nice lawn, that's the granary. Yeah, it looks absolutely beautiful from here. My God, it's so big. Just describe the style of the restaurants, Nigel. We call it um, sort of modern British. Nigel recruited local boy Martin White to create his vision of a modern British menu. So I'm expecting some updated British classics using homegrown produce from this head chef. I especially love British food, and I don't think there's enough of it around these days. You know, toad and the old steak and kidney pudding, Cornish pasties. But Martin's got a hidden past. He served six months for drug offences, and cooking was his salvation. Went back into training, literally in the prison kitchens, and there were some really good uh, chef prison officers who took me under their wing and, you know, I was kept out of trouble. And when I got out, you know, I went straight back to work. Because of his past, Martin wants to help other teenage tearaways. He has two on his cookery apprentice scheme. Cocky Pete is 18 and is known to the police. But I've done a few naughty things and that, got in trouble with the law, and now I've obviously found my godsend, which happens to be cooking, which I'm very proud of doing, and I enjoy it a lot, and I'm with a good team here at the Granary. His partner in crime is Mouthy Paul, nicknamed Chav. He's 19 and been arrested more times than he can remember. Job definitely saved me. It was felt like, yes, this is, this is fucking brilliant. Look, I'm actually doing this for myself. They're great lads. They do. You know, they work hard, they're, they're really keen to learn, and Martin's brought them on fantastically. My biggest worry probably is that unless things get a lot better, I wouldn't be able to keep them on anyway. Nigel can only afford to stay open another six months because he's already invested two million quid. Despite knowing nothing about private members' clubs, Nigel spent a fortune turning the granary into a swanky dining venue. Fucking hell. We were aiming for sort of Monty's or Soho House. What is that on there? Leather. Leather walls? Yeah. Bloody hell. 
You're aiming for Monty, that's the private of, love. The sort of feel, yeah. Rich and sumptuous and... Yeah. God. This is the uh, coach house, dining and function room. I have to say, I know I've only been here three or four minutes, it's fucking stiff, no? Do you think it's too stiff? It feels stuffy. Nigel's got a thin skin and doesn't take criticism well. We're proud of what we've done here. Uh, we get nothing but compliments about the interior of the building, the decor and everything else. He's just coming and rubbish the whole place. Not a thing here he likes. Nigel's joining me for lunch to discuss his so-called British menu. It's packed with 60 dishes from around the world. Um, do you get involved with the food at all? Yeah, I'd, I'd discuss it, obviously, with Martin. Mm -hmm. Incredibly, Nigel's fiercely proud of this silly menu. So I'm going to be brutally honest with him. I'll have the shark steak topped with tomato salsa and mozzarella. OK. Must be a bit of a Hampshire thing going on there. <laughs> shark steak. Um, what's My starter appears to be from Africa. And this is Moroccan chicken. Yeah. Um, wrapped in filo paste. Uh, what's modern British on that? Mm. What is modern British on that? Mm. Nothing. It's very spicy, then. Where's right. Moroccan? You seem upset. What's the matter? You seem uptight. I'm just waiting for you to slate the meal like you've slated everything else since you come in the place. Oh, dear. This is Nigel's idea of a modern British classic. Cheesy shark. What was the chef smoking when we came up with that one? <laughs> Have you tried it? Well, that, that's fucking ghastly. Well, that's a surprise. Huh? Mm. Now, don't get all defensive. I don't like it. Huh? How's your lamb? Beautiful. Honestly, really, do you think the food is good? Yeah, of course I do. You're, you're playing with me, aren't you? No, I think you're taking the piss, Gordon. That's what's happening. Sorry, shark and mozzarella. Sorry. Is. Let me go through your menu to see what you put together. Oh, it's see. easier to take the piss out of other people's stuff. We're going through my menu now. The shark's half a centimetre thick. Yeah. It's cooked and then gratinated, so it's cooked twice. It arrived with a plate full of water, so the fish was overcooked before it even got anywhere near my mouth. So why are you trying to be smart? If I said to you it tasted shit, accept it. Not a great start. I want to try Nigel's favourite, fillet of beef. This is cooked by Peter. So, you know, what a great experience for just 18 years old to be cooking from the best chefs in the, in the world. Maybe we should ask Nigel what I'm going to think about it before we go. I know what you're going to Thank think you. about it before you even try it. How did you find your steak? Um, it looked like someone was sick on my plate. There you go. That's fine. Um, apart from that, the steak was cooked nicely. Well, at least I could say this, you know, it can only get better from here, can't it? Uh, Christ. Yeah, definitely. Nigel's kidding himself the food is great and clearly doesn't want my advice. I just hope the head chef isn't as pompous as his boss. How are you? Good to see you. And this is... Paul. Paul, nice to see you. Hello. Peter. Peter. Hello. I had lunch with Nigel. Yeah. Sadly, very disappointing. In which way? I just found it old-fashioned, yeah. very boring and... When you say modern British, yeah. where was the beef from? Where's the beef from? It's, uh, that is not British. No. The steak was cooked nicely. Yeah. Pink. Yeah. It didn't need all the gunk around there. Okay. Uh, was the shark cooked OK for you? That was, was it? watery and overcooked. You thought it was overcooked? Uh, where, where is it actually well, from? Well, it'd be, uh, it's South Pacific Indian Ocean, I believe. And you buy it. Guys, do you want to listen or...? Yeah, yeah. we are listening. Uh, show some respect. Are you just going to stand no, there and piss your pants? I'm trying to have a chat, but it's... Sorry, okay, sorry, go on. Speak, show some fucking respect. All right? Sorry. Sorry, go on. Carry on. Can't stand up or...? What I'm trying to get through yeah. is modern British. It's hard to identify anything substantially modern British. Yeah. So, I'm here to help. OK. This man hasn't understood that yet. All right. I didn't enjoy my lunch. It doesn't need to be that fancy. It's probably over the top, yeah. And it is on the verge of being pretentious, too much style and insufficient flavour. The Granary is an amazing location, but 
Everything about it is fucking wrong. The teenage asbos, they're so full of themselves, it's fucking embarrassing. The decor's flash and pretentious, and the food, well, it can't be any more further away from modern British. No wonder the fucking locals aren't coming. Entrepreneur turned restaurateur Nigel Nedu's massive restaurant is in deep financial trouble. His head chef Martin runs an apprentice scheme for out of control teenage tearaways. The granary has a capacity for 200, but on a busy night, they're serving an average of 40 people. It's unsustainable. To survive, we've got to fill this place. Now, before I do anything, I need to see if they can cope when it's busy. So tonight, I've got 90 locals coming in for dinner, and I want to see how they all handle pressure. You know, what um, was done 60 last night, mate? Was it 60? 61? Just me and Pete over here. And the place is capable of doing, what, 200? Yeah, I think we can do that quite easily. Um, we'll see with the garden as well. There's no reason why we couldn't do more. How many hours a week do you want? Um, this week is probably about 60 to 65. Good. Healthy. <laughs> I could call it that. <laughs> well, the harder you work, the more fucking trouble you start up, surely. Yeah, it's a, it's a good really. I need to know how head chef, come probation officer Martin and his lads cope with lots of diners. Two Moroccan chicken, soup, one palm ham, ricotta. Martin's fiddly foreign dishes take ages to get out of the kitchen. What's the sauce there, um, Martin? Yeah, prawn, sweet and sour. We're only 30 minutes into the service, and some of the food has been sent back cold. All right, Pete. Yes. Tell so we're going to do this again. Service, please. The restaurant is filling up, but Martin is struggling to keep up with the orders. Martin, I need one for each one for their starter. First table 14. They haven't had their starters. Table 14, three and crevettes. We've been here since five. And we're, we're still waiting for the We're still not working. Yeah, exactly. We know what's going on. Service has got off to a really bad start. Um, customers are complaining. There's one table there that have been waiting two hours. Food's been served twice, and um, they are really seriously pissed off. Nigel can't afford a restaurant manager and runs the front of house himself. His lack of experience is causing chaos. Boys, have you got 22 on there? I don't know if there's any chance we might get our starters. Yeah, sorry, we're having a meltdown in there. It's not crevice. It's not, it's a mullet. They've crossed it out, it's a mullet. This has got to be the worst day of my entire life, to be honest. What did you do to help the gentleman? We've taken his meals off the bill. Uh-huh. But in three hours, I mean, what is the time now? I don't know. Yeah, quarter to eight. Yeah, got it at five o'clock. Right. Joking it. Martin said he could cope with 200, but I've proved he can't even cope with half of that tonight. It's never happened before. I'm not happy about it. We've been stitched up, so not doing this. Dodge, I'm not doing it anymore, mate. Well, well, who's stitching who here? You can pull it back together, can't you? I really can't be bothered. I don't like this and I don't want to do it, mate. I didn't want to do it in the first place. I'm out of it. Come on, let's get this done. Right, let's get this course. done. We've got a lot of people in there, mate. I'm not doing it, mate. It's bollocks. What's going on? Neither Martin nor Nigel accept responsibility for the mess and want a scapegoat. Unsurprisingly, Nigel sees an opportunity to get his own back. We've been stitched up tonight. No, I've never been stitched, stitched up. Happy about oh, come on, that's, that's We've dreadful. never had a fucking night like this, Gordon. That's I swear to God. Let's, 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 We've never had a night like this. Why are you shouting? Why are you shouting? Why have you done this to us? Why have I. What? Why did you do this to us tonight? We've never had a night like this, never, since we've been open. Don't be so ridiculous, will you? Shit food. Fucking red mullet frozen from Thailand. The fact that we're not performing, the servers are all over the place, the customers are fucking complaining. Why did you put 90 people? Without giving us any notice. There's still 50 you haven't even fucking served. So what are you blaming me for this? Still, the 50 haven't been served. We Don't didn't count get a chance. how many's on the service. We Don't count and come we back. We didn't even get a chance. You're a weak man because you just pick oh, on fuck us. Fuck off, Gordon. Don't call me a weak man. You're Who a the weak fuck man. Do you think you are? Why don't you open your eyes, get your head out of your ass, and try to look at your business yeah. objectively? I'm on the They clearly can't cook the existing menu. They're struggling. There's nearly 60 customers still on the board. They've barely cooked 25, 30 main courses, and all of a sudden, I'm to blame because they're busy and they're not handling it. Thankfully, Martin sees sense and he's back in the kitchen. You can get this back together. Yeah, we're, huh? we're gonna do it. We're gonna do it. They may have come at fucking the same time, but Jesus Christ. Yeah. Huh? Come on. Oh no, we're there, mate. Oh, no. Just had a funny five minutes there. I felt like I was letting myself down, letting the team down, and then. If I was to walk out, I'd be letting them down even more and myself. And I wouldn't live myself if I'd done that. So.
Not a sort of night I'd like to repeat, I'll be honest with you. It's really quite devastating to have to go around to every single customer in the place and apologise. I don't know. I know what he's. I know what he's doing, and I, I realise the, the reason for why he did it tonight. You know, he needed to see what would happen if we were pushed past breaking point. I think. But let's just confirm something, shall we? Everybody, yeah, yeah. You're fucked, yeah. One thing we should never do is fucking give up. No matter how fucking hard it gets out there, That's we it. never give up. Because no. we give up, the customer suffers. And let's be honest, this business is in trouble. And if this doesn't work. They're all out of a fucking job. That's a big responsibility, you know that? I do, yeah. Yeah, huge. And we'll get it right, OK? OK. The granary doesn't attract enough locals to survive. Before I can work out a solution, I need to know why. Um, have you been to the granary? I oh, have. Yeah. And can you tell me a little bit about it? Uh, it's a nice sitting, rubbish service. Yeah, there used to be a club for private members only, but that didn't really last that long. So it has a bad reputation locally? N well, nobody ever goes there, so I think if it was any good, all the people in the village would go there. Mm -hmm. The things that I heard about it just sounded a bit out of my league, to be honest. <laughs> a bit too expensive, I'm afraid. Private before, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So a bit off-putting. Yeah. Yes. It's nice to go into a restaurant and try different bits and pieces, but I think they sort of went a bit over the mark, like with the shark and, and things like that. You know, people do want to try different things, but I don't think that works, really. It's clear. Nigel's silly pretensions of grandeur have alienated the locals. Exclusive clubs won't work round here. When you've a reputation this bad, the only thing to do is create a delicious traditional menu the locals can't resist. Hampshire is awash with independent farmers producing fantastic British staples, so I'm going to use that fantastic produce to help turn the granny around. Now, I've got to come up with a menu that Martin can cope with that will seriously appeal to the locals. It's as simple as that. This morning, I'm taking the lads to a local vegetable farm to get them passionate about using fresh ingredients. This is vital if I'm ever going to turn them into chefs. Beetroot, yeah? OK, so, perfect size. We're looking for is just above, yeah, a golf ball. <laughs> huh? Nice. This lot have only ever seen their veg wrapped in clim film. Come on, Paul. Put some welly in there. Pete, have you got anything yet? <laughs> no. Such a wimp. Such a wimp. Instead of nicking cars, we're nicking carrots. <laughs> <laughs> These reprobates are going to learn how to cook with the very stuff they're pulling out of the ground. Martin, <laughs> excited? Superb, yeah, brilliant. Amazing, a completely different yeah. take uh, on vegetables, yeah? Yes. I was also a bit of a teenage tearaway and crashed a car whilst uninsured. Cooking was my salvation then, so I want to encourage these lads in their careers. I've got something in common with you guys. I started off in a very similar position to both of you. And you can stay focused. Yeah. And like I said, my worry is you stepping off that line and fucking it up. At the time when you got into trouble, what did you turn to? I suppose cooking, like, I never wanted to be the footballer when I was a little kid. Uh -huh. Like My mum and dad have always got me enthusiastic about food and yep. trying new things and that. Yep. Watching you both work, the potential's phenomenal. Yeah. Don't so, have to be chippy and you've got to stay excited. And uh, awesome. Martin keeps you guys on straight and narrow. Yeah, mm -hmm. it makes us know that we can make something of ourselves. Yeah. Yeah. Martin and his boys didn't cope with 90 last night. I'm going to show them tonight how they can easily serve that number. It's a great British classic. Two Roast pork. Each table gets its own joint along with a freshly picked veg. This could really pull in the locals and ease the pressure in the kitchen. With the large tables in for dinner tonight, I want to try something different. Loin of pork, shoulder of pork, belly of pork, gratin dauphinoise, and we just cook for the table. Where's the pork from? I hope it's British. Hatchet. Yeah. Fucking down the road. Yeah, that's right. Romsey. There's 90 in again tonight, but service should be easier as everyone is helping themselves. And I'm letting the lads loose on the public. Go on then, my big brave boy. Gloucester Old Spot. Gloucester Old Spot. Pork. Reared in Hampshire. Reared in Hampshire. Oh. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> you just went silent there. In here, yeah? A mouth bigger than fucking Isla White. Out there, yeah? You just go silent. Yeah. You weren't uh, nervous out there, were you? Oh, uh, nah, I was uh, <laughs> shitting myself would be the correct terms. There's 1,700 quid in the till, and even touchy Nigel has to admit, I've got it right. Gordon's taking some of the heat off us with his specials, uh, which has accounted for quite a lot of the big tables. One good night won't save the granary. Only large numbers can do that. I swear to God, we've got a fucking mountain to climb. We are losing. Big time. And tonight, we're 82. Let's be honest, if we pushed ourselves, we could have been 150 tonight. Yeah. But there is a fucking amazing bond in here, yeah? And I was very fortunate enough to work under Marco's wing for three years. And I went in there at 19 and I got my fucking ass kicked. And I went in there at the time because things were going slightly pear-shaped at home. So I lost myself. Yeah? If we're going to do this, then fucking concentrate. Everyone's got problems, trouble past, fucking shit to deal with. But if you can let your work shine, the shit takes care of itself. A granary's menu is changing, but Nigel's inexperience means front of house service is dismal. Today, I've brought in some birds for the lads. I use their amazing eggs myself. Yeah, underneath, yeah. Underneath his breast, that's it, nice. Old Cotswold leg bars, they are phenomenal. Okay, look after them. You'll be surprised on the amount of eggs produced. They're fucking ugly fish, aren't they? Ugly. They are ugly. Right now, these hens are homeless. This is a test to improve Nigel's management skills. He must build the hen house by delegating work to his waitresses. Nigel's going to give the instructions, read them out. As soon as they're together, we can release the chickens, put them inside, yes? I know entrepreneurs like Nigel are strong individuals, but to be a successful front of house manager, you must be a team player. That's definitely up the other way, whatever happens. Yeah. Like that, that's it. Um, they're roof panels. What are? Those sides? These are roof panels? <laughs> yep. They're all waiting for instructions yet you're only talking to yourself. I'm reading. Yeah, to them. No, I've got to understand it first. We're going to tell them before I understand it. With his prickly attitude, it's clear Nigel's no team player. See, so you're going to fucking flat pack anything that doesn't fucking fit, does it? This is a worry, the head of tonight's service. Just over 100 books, so... if that's how confident he is at delegating a chicken pen being put together, what the fuck is he going to be like running the dining room? I think Nigel's arrogance means he can't take any constructive criticism. Yeah, that's fine. Yep. Nigel's management remains a big headache, but tonight's service is looming, and I have to teach the lads a couple of British classics, starting with mushrooms on toast. So we're serving the mushrooms. Now, what are those chickens producing out there? What have we got? Excellent. Beautiful eggs, yeah? So, on top of the mushrooms, we're going to have the most amazing poached egg. Yeah, how long does it take to softly poach an egg, Paul? Three minutes. Yeah, three, three and a half minutes. Just finish a little bit of mustard. Yeah, and go. I think I've spotted great potential in Pete. I'm trusting him to cook the locally sourced calves good. liver. And just turn it over, good. Really important to cook it quickly, yeah, good. Nice. Liver on. Yeah. Bacon. Little sprig of watercress. Yeah, liver and bacon. All we've done is three or four dishes that are tasting naturally. Really fucking focus on that tonight, yeah? Yeah. And it's a big ask and a massive responsibility on your shoulders, yeah? yeah? And when the fucking shit hits the fan, I'm here, but don't fucking lose it, OK? All right, lose it. OK? This is a crucial test of my strategy to save the granary. Tonight, we've got 100 booked, including a party of 48 air traffic controllers from the local airport. Come fly with me, let's fly. These professionals know how to avert disaster. I only hope I can do the same. The kitchen's ready, but Nigel and his waitresses can't afford to screw up in the restaurant. I think the communication has got to be a lot better tonight. The last party out there is 48. Don't bring them all in together. Make it work. We need the tickets quickly. OK? okay? Yeah. Big test. Let's go. Good luck. <laughs> Nigel, what's the matter? <laughs> I don't know, nothing I'm aware of, honestly. No, but you were flapping around looking like you were fucking... So you know, I was just getting the girls organised into their teams. OK, yeah. you've got young staff there and they're not controlled. Who's controlling them? Me. Good. Do it. Right. Let's go. OK. 
So far, very, very smooth, very nice, very relaxed. Nigel, are we the last Templeton down? The 50. Uh, I'm OK, good. It'd be nice to get some of the orders in there, yeah? Yeah, so they don't get swamped at once, yeah? All right, mate. Faye, you got a full mushrooms on? Yeah, lovely. The starters for the air traffic controllers are ready. Service, please. Yep, it's going, yeah? Unfortunately, the waitress has taken some food to the wrong table, and Nigel doesn't spot it. Two of us have got a, uh, have got a starter, and nobody else has yet got a starter, so um, where's the rest of the food coming from? Do we eat it now, or do we not? Other customers are sending their starters back. Touch, touch that. Oh, okay. It's stone fucking cold. Nigel's job is simply to make sure the waitresses do what they're told. I'm now doing table 21, OK? All you want to take for this, as precise moment, is four mushrooms, OK? That's the 21. Martin says explicitly the mushroom dish is for table 21, but the waitress serves it to the wrong table, right under Nigel's nose. Anya, 21, he said. Nigel knows a terrible mistake has been made. This is not what chef tells you. You take it to the table he told you, yeah? But because he's inexperienced, Nigel doesn't make the waitress take the dish to the correct table, making a fraught situation even worse. Services, either cooking or service, something is wrong. This is absolutely appalling. Front of house is really screwing us over. Yeah, it's been screwed in that room. It's been screwed in that room. Come on, you've got to talk to me, big boy. OK, OK, I'm going to 14. It's Thank two, you. Two, two. You've got a team here waiting for orders. Come on, Mark. Right. Yeah? Four forks, guy. Thank you. Don't go flat on me. Right, Cav, straight away. Use a two Church, everyone. Huh? No, Sean, five trout, straight away. Five trout from over there, go. Two Martin has stepped up to the challenge, but someone else hasn't. OK. Yeah, I need breathing exercises, then. Just settle down, just relax. Yeah, just want to sit down for a minute. Yeah, can do. I'm, I'm not going back in here until I've had a cigarette, honestly. No. Too stressed, mate. It's a disaster. Nigel's panicked and lost control. At least the new dishes have gone down well. It's very nice. It's taken forever to arrive. It's complete, completely all over the place, but it's great food. Now it's come. In my eyes, the buck stops with the boss. There's no way I'm going to let Nigel get away with it. He must accept responsibility. That was unbelievable. It was fucking embarrassing. What went wrong? Let me ask you first. You own the place. Truthfully now... I don't fucking know is the honest answer to what happened. You don't know? It was a... Listen. Two people went to the wrong tables. Now, I know for a fact that Anya, regardless of what table she was told, went and put it where she fucking liked. I don't know why she did that, but she did it. That's all I know. Yeah, that's all you know. I don't think you're capable of running a fucking bar, let alone a restaurant. Yeah. You're employing cheap labour, no fucking training. Cheap labour? And you're expecting them to get up to speed. When was, last you, when was the last time you trained a waitress? Enough. I've got to go and look after my customers. This is nonsense, right? I've told him what happened. I've told him what fucking happened. Talk to me. Why? Because you don't listen. I'm in denial. I do this all the time. This hour I'm my fucking restaurant. It's not true. That's why you're in this shit, you no, fucking not. fat idiot. Don't call me fat. You are a twat. Do you know that? You stupid, you stupid, stupid idiot. You fucking silly you're looking... You're in the This is how you run your business, is you're it? You're a fucking knob. Ah, oh, you're walking away now. Go and talk to my customers. Go and talk to the fucking oh, regulars out there. Here See if go. they've ever seen a service and like this. And what are they going to say to me? Go and ask a regular. You are the best host in fucking Hampshire. Probably, some of them. Are you that fucking blind? I'm not saying that there isn't massive improvements that can't be made here, but if you think that this is the way I run it and I can't run this, you're wrong. So fuck it, I've done my best. I don't need to talk about this anymore. Unfucking believable. Last night, Nigel's lamentable leadership caused a mid-air collision for a party of air traffic controllers, but he denied responsibility. Nigel's arrogance could close the granary for good. Will he listen to me? Gordon may have found me arrogant, but that, in truth, that would only be a reaction to the way he was treating me. You know, when you've invested four years of your life, a huge amount of money into creating something, it's very personal. I won't be spoken to in that way, even if it is Gordon Ramsay. The most important thing is to get this right. And sometimes when you um, get defensive on the back of criticism, it's almost as if you can't, you can't take it. All I want to see is some form of maturity in dealing with it. Mm -hmm. And I'm not expecting you to like what I say, but let's agree to disagree 
for now, yeah. draw a line and move on. Right. Have you thought about getting a restaurant manager full time? Because I, I think you need help. We have issues with servers that need to be controlled. I, I take your point. I mean, you know, I'm not a professional restaurant manager. You know, at the moment, I'm doing the best I can. All I want to do is make the place as good as it can be. Uh huh. Okay. I need a trick to lure the locals back in, who've been put off by the granary's exclusive reputation. A fun event for parents and kids could get them back. We need to find a way to get them out of the house with their kids and come and visit the granary. Have you seen what's produced locally here? No. From the best tomatoes, to the best garlic, to the best mushrooms. Why can't we have a food fair day? A way of uh, announcing that you're here. Brilliant. I think it's a fantastic idea. Yep. Let's go. Time's not our friend right now. Yeah? I'll get right on it. Yeah. Within 12 hours, the food fair is underway. Instead of shark steaks, we've got Great Hampshire produce. The fair's designed to secure future bookings for the new look granary. The only exclusive thing here is a petting zoo for the kids. Cheese on toast. Really? I'm going to try that. I am sure it's mild. I'll just give you a little bit. Right, nice. Happy? This yeah. One. I'm absolutely over the moon. This is, this is, uh -huh. you caught me pinching all the chili dips. They're amazing. Do try Regular fun food events like this will get families filling up the gigantic granary and help to establish a more friendly reputation for the restaurant. Absolutely amazing. I really want to fire up these young chefs with a challenge. They must create a salad using Hampshire root vegetables. The winner will go on my new menu. Colour for the plate. Uh huh. Okay, good. So eggs, tomatoes. Look at the colour of those yolks. Lovely. Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. Nice colour. Okay. Paul's looking nervous. He's starting to sweat. Hey. His oh. gel's running. I'm starting to sweat as well. Just. Keep going. I'm ready to drop it when it's ready. Go. Ryan, what are they? Beetroot and roast parsnip salad with chopped walnuts and an English mustard dressing. What is it, Paul? Mine is an egg and rocket salad, so with parsnip chips. Sean, what is it? Pan-fried parsnips and honey and oil with a uh, carrot coulee. You blanch them first in boiling yeah, water? Yeah, I blanched them first. And then roast it? I'll figure them up. I like all three of them. Oh, yeah. mm. And you? They're all very good. And do you know what? Let's get the customers having a taste as well. Forks down, describe what it is. The honey roasted parsnips. At last, these boys have had a chance to shine. Their enthusiasm can only improve the menu further. Whose dish is best? Which one would you prefer to order off the menu? The second one. Sir? The second one. Peter's. Yeah. Excellent. Five to one. Congratulations. Thank you yes. very much. Well, Thank you. Good, 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 good. Just literally off the top of my head, come up back. And for them all to like it as well is well, amazing, really. What flavour have we got here? Uh, smoked haddock and leek potato. The stress of running a failing business has meant Nigel has taken himself far too seriously. He needs to relax and drum up some new business. How many bookings have we got so far? So far, so from today? Yes. Uh, I don't know, the girls, are, the girls have got the book, but they're, they're filling up fast. OK, they're not filling enough. Up fast. Yes. Go upstairs. Yeah. Put this on. <laughs> Come down. You are joking <laughs> me. Put this on. <laughs> Have some fun with the kids. Relax a little bit. I want to see you. You relax. are. Yes. Joking. All right. Okay. Off we go. Yeah. Go. And hey, get some more reservations. Yes. <laughs> Nigel, move your ass. Yeah. I always thought Nigel was plucking mad. Well, there you go. I mean, a chicken wouldn't lie about good food, would he? So, when would you want to come in? <laughs> you know, me and Gordon have been sort of at it like that. But, you know, I do understand the reasons, and I know he's very, very passionate. And, you know, this is, this is the proof of, you know, how, how much he's putting into this to, to make sure that people know about the granary. So, no, I just want to get on board with it, you know, get the job done properly. It seriously, honestly, does look like the penny has dropped. He has got up to speed with understanding the importance of his locals. Get them on your side, they're customers. Without them, you're fucked. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's my last day. Tonight we relaunch the family-friendly granary. I'm going to finally nail Nigel's silly pretensions of grandeur. Just think, people used to pay two grand a year to come here. Now, yeah, 
They don't have to pay anything. <laughs> there we go. Wow. Is that my new logo, the big fat the, chicken? No, I didn't say fat chicken. <laughs> that's a cock. <laughs> Thanks and that's where you've been all fucking week. <laughs> I'm unconvinced that the kitchen problems are completely fixed. But the menu must change for tonight's launch. I've remodeled it with down to earth British recipes, like this new broad bean and ham hock starter. Fresh parsley and some fresh chives. Yeah? And then just lift it up there. So, and look, it looks like something again, straight out the garden. The haddock main is pan fried, then topped with a caper sauce. All designed to make life in the kitchen much easier. Basically, just a nut brown butter and look on over the haddock. Again, I'm just trying to keep it as simple as possible, yeah? If these guys fuck up tonight, yeah, it's your fault. I'm here with you and I'm yes. here with them, but they've got to use their own common sense as well, you know that? Yeah. Um, Pete's come a long way, but I have my doubts about his boss, Martin. Has he got his priorities right? It's difficult sometimes because, yeah, sometimes, yeah, you, you know, you're obviously you're trying to be a head chef at all times, but at the same time, you're you're trying to be a five figure stroke probation officer to them and when you're trying to do both, sometimes it's difficult. I'm also worried about Nigel. So I'm gonna make sure he gets some help with the service. Who is gonna volunteer to work alongside Nigel and lead all three dining rooms? Someone that's over everything. Yeah, um, I'll do it. Good. Happy with that, Nigel? Yeah, yeah, top yeah? choice. So okay, what's funny, Pete? Nothing. Go on, share the joke. Go on. It's just you may be 18 years of age, but you're not that fucking old to get kicked out. OK? Yeah. So fucking calm down, yeah? And show a little bit of fucking respect, yeah? And let your cooking do the talking. Yeah. OK. Focus, enjoy it, and fucking put your heads down. Don't go silent on me. I'm in. Do right. not go silent on me, because when you're silent, they're silent. Really, Got to control really it, come out of the traps, and those orders I need in quick. OK? Good. Let's go. Go, boys. You ready? Yeah. Yeah. Service. Yeah. It's a totally new menu. Martin must rise to the challenge and keep these lads in line. He seems overconfident to me. A couple of hours, it'll be all over, and we're sitting outside smoking a big fat cigar. Okay, two fish cakes and a beetroot salad. Go to table four, please. Out front, Nigel is in control, with Laura keeping him on his toes. Okay, how's everybody out there? Yeah, well done. Sean. Stand by to go out and carve the pork, yeah? In and out. The dining rooms are much more relaxed, just right for eating with the whole family, with the salads a storming success. Lovely food. And the kids have all enjoyed yeah. yourself. You enjoyed it? Yeah! yeah. <laughs> but in the kitchen, Martin's more like a lily-livered preparation officer than an assertive head chef. Come on. Yeah, lovely. <laughs> Yeah, if, it, well, if I shout all the time and scream, people don't listen to me, so... Yeah, no-one's yeah. asking to scream and shout and look like an idiot. I'm just trying to... Yeah, look, yeah. It's just it's all running it like we're on Blackpool Beach, trotting along <laughs> with a fucking Cornetto. Oh, dear. Looks like Martin's already given up, because he seems to have sunken, and he's not inspiring any of the cooks, and it's a great shame, because in 15 minutes' time, the guy's going to be up to his neck in shit, and he'll start complaining and whinging. Yeah, we can't, we can't serve that, Martin. No, no, I mean, they're they're going to throw it back before you. Yeah. No chance. Can he start his table 11? They've been waiting a very long time. Kitchen's got uh, the gobsters in a bit of a pickle there. Yeah, they, they are backed up there, yeah? So I'm sorry, the rest will be coming out just in a couple of minutes. Martin isn't directing his chefs. I've got to step in. Come on, Paul, help him put him on the plate as well. Mark, you've got to yeah, talk to him. Jimmy, you just handed you off. When I say you've gone flat as a pancake, man, I really mean it. Customers are backing up, we're in the shit, and there's too many hot starters doors. Oh, hell. come on, don't, don't, don't give me that limit. There is a cut. There's a fish cake and mushrooms on toast. Yeah, I know. The soup's in a container. Yeah, but when they're ordering eight of them, they've ordered. Hey, can you shut up a minute, please, yeah? <laughs> they're not ordering any. You're not helping. Sorry? Not Say that again? Uh, Do you just tell me to fuck off? Uh, Is that the thanks you get? But listen, let me just tell you something to your face. I know you think it's cocky and no, smart no, and I fucking hard. I'm talking to Martin and you shout over me and you're saying, well, all you're here shouting. You've got a lot to learn. Yeah. This is what happens when the kitchen's not committed. A uh, shepherd tells me the two hot stars are too much, one fish cake to reheat, mushrooms on toast, and the chippy little yeah, in the corner shouting his mouth off. Yeah? yeah? You think someone would show a little bit more balls than that, wouldn't you? Oh, yeah, but there's not people working easy. Yeah, I'm not, but you can choose an argument that you're not going to be working. You can listen to work, yes? 
Martin has lost his grip over the kitchen, but I was right to put my trust in Pete, who's shown he can deal with pressure. <coughs> Martin, well done, lamb. Meet you, lamb. Got eight pork in there? Yes, eight pork. Right, right, there okay, you right. go, that's table 18. Okay. Eight. I like it's stone cold. That's the third dish I've sent back out of three. My egg was completely rock hard. My Yorkshire pudding was black. It's a shame. I was getting excited about tonight. This is heartbreaking. Martin couldn't cope with the numbers and he didn't handle his kitchen tearaways well either. I'm speechless. Yeah, those are going too well. Oh, they're going too well. I still think you could have rose to the mark. I still could have come out of the trap and bang. I, I'm, I'm seriously disappointed. I was disappointed. Why? I turned around and said, you know, you went quiet, you didn't delegate, you didn't drive it, you didn't force it. I mean, you sunk. From a chef to chef's point of view, let's have a little bit more balls All together. Right, yeah, I am. I'm fucking gutted. If it didn't work, I will take full responsibility for it. It didn't work for me tonight. I wasn't, you know, no disrespect to anyone. It just didn't work for me. It's this. The menu? It was, it was too, too much. To Do you want to go back nervous. to the old shit? No, I don't. OK, that's I'm, good I'm news. really pleased with what you brought in. I'm really pleased with it. Gordon, we're going to get this right and, uh, you know, we'll make it work. We will make it work. When we you get back get here, you're going to see us firing on all sorts of things. We're going to be in first thing tomorrow morning. We're going to sit down meeting. We're going to discuss the menu. We're going to get this place rolling. I swear to God, if it, if it bloody kills me. It's such a fucking shame and so frustrating. I honestly thought that both Nigel and Martin were going to turn that business around, but on the back of that performance, no chance. But I hope, for the sake of everybody employed by the granary, that I'm wrong. But I'm not holding my fucking breath, because that was embarrassing. It's been six weeks now since I was last at the granary, and when I left them, they had the perfect, locally sourced, real rustic British menu, but the problem was that Martin couldn't actually cope with the large numbers it was going to take to make the granary work financially, so I hope the hell that guy's got his act together. Right. What in the fuck am I going to be blamed for now? Here we go. Has Nigel gone back to his old, arrogant ways? Can I come in? You can. Excellent. How are you? Very good, thanks. Yeah? Good to, to see you. Very nice to see you too. Are you well? Yeah, very good, thank you. Very good. good. Um, I like that sound. Customers in the background, busy. kitchen busy. Yeah, How many's booked for lunch? We've got about 45 today for lunch. 45 for lunch. Now that's good. In the middle of Hampshire. That's very yes. good for us. Midway. Very good. Money in the till? Yes or no? Yeah, it's just picking up. I mean, we're uh, we're already a bit busier than we were. Staff wise, you okay? Pretty good. A couple of serious changes. Uh -huh. Uh, Martin's leaving. Hello, How How buddy. Very well, thank you. How are you? Oh, very well, thank yeah? you. Yeah. Well, you look calm. You look yeah. relaxed. Oh, I am. Yeah. In comparison to the last time well, I saw yeah. you. <laughs> yeah. Well, I've got some staff now, so you know, and that makes my life a lot easier. What's this? I heard you're leaving. Yeah, so I've uh, decided to uh, move on. Um, a lot of it's uh, down to you too, really. You maybe realise that. Maybe I'll start up a government-funded workshop, That's working fantastic. with guys between the ages of 14 and 16. Hey. Pete, how are you, buddy? I'm fine. How are you? Yeah, very well, thank you. One's missing. Chav, where is he? Chav, he's, uh, he decided he wanted to do a bit of travelling, uh -huh. and he's gone to work with an old trainee of mine who's got a hotel in the Lake District now. Pete, focusing? Excellent, yeah. yeah. So, uh, you know, even more focused than he was when he had his moments, but, yeah, he's uh, really nothing to do. Everything's relaxed, but I haven't forgotten the disastrous last service. I'll see tonight if they've improved. But what about the food? OK. Right, um, I'm hungry. Have you got a spare little table for...? The usual table, sir? Yeah, let's go to the usual table, yeah. Okay. Um, let's go back. Now, it'd be nice to actually sit and have lunch and not be blamed for anything this time. Yeah. Uh, look at that. Local lamb. I'm nervous about my lunch. These guys are really busy today, but the menu's promising. It all fits in now, doesn't it? Great news. Uh, music to my ears, yeah? Thank you. Can I just say, you're one stubborn fucker. Cool, dear, oh dear. It takes a while to completely change your thinking, doesn't it? But yeah, lovely. That looks nice. I've ordered a new dish, local mullet broth. That's lovely. That it's like a little minestrone. Um, listen, this is delicious. Excellent. <laughs> listen, yeah, this is a million miles better. I'm telling you, lovely. And without Martin, you know, it's all down to you now. You know, it's all yeah. on your shoulders. You know, I'm happy with it. I've, uh, I've still got a great team here. Um, the million dollar question, even in front of. 25 ladies having lunch. Would you accept that you were wrong? 
Can I say it quietly? You can say it as loud or as quiet as you wish. I was wrong. You were wrong. <laughs> wow, look at that. The food's changed and Nigel's attitude has changed. So, yeah, it's great news all round. He's a little bit more humble now and it looks like he's got rid of all those little dreams on the private bar and all that crap. It's back to humble cooking in a humble building. And the red mullet? Whose idea was that? Red mullet. That's my, well, that's my idea, but Pete cooked your red mullet for your lunch. I hope you liked it. It was delicious. There was one problem with it, and don't take this personally, yeah? The portion was too small. Uh, ah, I wanted more. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted more. Happy, really. Happy because he's happy for a change. The real test is to come. Can Martin and the team deal with a busy night? I'm asking customers to write comment cards to see if the granary has restored its battered reputation. Express yourself. Locals, um, would you be so kind to fill out a customer comment card? Would you be so kind to fill out a customer comment card? Yeah. And just tell us exactly what you think. Service, please. More importantly for me and the restaurant, please be honest. And your criticisms are crucial. So we'll fry a deliver and a well done lamb, please. And then just give us a line on the back and tell me exactly what you think. Nervous about the comment cards? No, not at all. No? Good. I like that level of confidence. Lamb place and faggots. It's not what you look like when you're doing what you're doing. You're loving the food. Hopefully if we can keep the act together on service as well, we'll be fine. <laughs> Seems very well organised in there, nice and calmly run. Boys are working really well. But now, for me, the most important part is the customer comment cards. That's what I can't wait to read. <laughs> Just in half. Right, right, right. Thank you. Good, bad. Shall I be nervous? Scared. Scared. First customer comment card. Really nice cooked food. Great to see local produce. Service, friendly, relaxed, wonderful atmosphere. Oh, smile, then. Hey. Bloody hell. Hey. Second one. Very tasty, very well cooked, yeah? Always a pleasure. Atmosphere, ambiance, cosy and warm. I'd rather like the young chef, can I have him cook me a steak? What? Contact number, man. <laughs> I wrote it, you fucking... Oh. <laughs> Good news. Locals love it. Great feedback from the comment cards, and what more could you ask for? Good, honest, local produce, cooked simply. That's it. The granary is graced by the locals, finally. If your restaurant dream has turned into a kitchen nightmare, contact us at channel4.com forward slash take part. Service, lovely, warm, friendly service. I'm very happy. Overall, atmosphere, cosy, I'm coming back. Really? Much better than Gordon's food. Did you really say that? Yeah! yeah. 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 <laughs> I wrote it. No, you didn't. I wrote it. Yeah. Last one. Nice soup, sexy bread, tender pork. Good. Atmosphere, warm, cosy, and welcoming. That is enough. Yes! Uh, finally, well done. I'm wrestling with a titanic restaurant sinking into a financial black hole. Right now, yeah, yeah. the granary is the biggest shithole in Hampshire. The clueless owner's an entrepreneur, not a restaurateur. This is how I run my fucking restaurant. It's not true. That's why you're in this shit, you no, fucking it's not. fat idiot. There's a couple of young offenders in the kitchen. Witness intimidation, assault. And the head chef is more like a parole officer who just can't cope. I really can't be bothered. I don't like this and I don't want to do it, mate. Why did he walk out? Why are you asking me? We're in rural Hampshire, where I've just bought a really nice, tiny country cottage. And from a chef's point of view, here, you have some of the most amazing produce anywhere in Britain. So I'm really looking forward to a nice, laid-back, British country lunch. I'm heading for the Granary, a huge 200-seater restaurant owned by businessman and property entrepreneur Nigel Nedu. He thinks his glam upmarket eatery should be earning him a fortune. To my mind, we've invested in all the right things. It's, it's a beautiful place. The, the quality of the food is good. We've got great chefs. You know, I'm at a bit of a loss, to be honest, to, to understand why the place isn't busier. Nigel's dream project is failing, and it's an all-too-familiar tale in my trade. 
running a successful business doesn't mean you can run a restaurant. I've found myself in the thick of it, really, and just basically doing the best I can. Well, you do feel vulnerable. I mean, it's like, who do you turn to? You can only keep digging deeper and deeper yourself. But, you know, I suppose it was... Uh, well, that's why we turned to Gordon. Here we are. Despite hemorrhaging four grand a week, Nigel likes the finer things in life, and he's offered to show me the area. Are you a good pilot? I'm a bad. I'm a bad man. Tell you about the area where we are here. Uh -huh. This is a it's a very nice, very affluent area. Uh -huh. There seems to be so many swimming pools here. Nigel convinced himself the wealthy Hampshire locals would flock to a flash exclusive dining club. So he opened one in 2003, and it cost up to two grand to join. For the first night, Nigel invited celebrity guests like Jordan. Just for we thought we'd cracked it. The launch was so incredibly well attended and everyone was so excited by what was happening. The feedback was, wow, this is the most amazing place, we're all going to be coming here, and then uh, they, none of them did. When Nigel's Playboy project went bust, he dropped the joining fee. Reopened as the granary, but it was too late. Its local reputation was shot to pieces. Just down here to the left here, Gordon, this is the restaurant. OK. The, the kind of cream building there with the nice, nice lawn, that's the granary. Yeah, it looks absolutely beautiful from here. My God, it's so big. Just describe the style of the restaurants, Nigel. We call it um, sort of modern British. Nigel recruited local boy Martin White to create his vision of a modern British menu. So I'm expecting some updated British classics using homegrown produce from this head chef. I especially love British food. I don't think there's enough of it around these days. You know, toad and old steak and kidney pudding, Cornish pasties. But Martin's got a hidden past. He served six months for drug offences, and cooking was his salvation. Went back into training, literally in the prison kitchens, and there were some really good uh, chef prison officers who took me under their wing and, you know, I just kept out of trouble. And when I got out, you know, I went straight back to work. Because of his past, Martin wants to help other teenage tearaways. He has two on his cookery apprentice scheme. Cocky Pete is 18 and is known to the police. But I've done a few naughty things and I got in trouble with the law and now I've obviously found my godsend, which happens to be cooking, which I'm very proud of doing and I enjoy it a lot and we have a good team here at the Granary. His partner in crime is Mouthy Paul, nicknamed Chav. He's 19 and been arrested more times than he can remember. Job definitely saved me. It was felt like, yes, this is, this is fucking brilliant, isn't it? I'm actually doing this for myself. They're great lads. They do... You know, they work hard, they're, they're really keen to learn, and Martin's brought them on fantastically. My biggest worry probably is that unless things get a lot better, I wouldn't be able to keep them on anyway. Nigel can only afford to stay open another six months because he's already invested two million quid. Despite knowing nothing about private members' clubs, Nigel spent a fortune turn of the granary into a swanky dining venue. Fucking hell. We were aiming for sort of Monty's or Soho House. What is that on there? Leather. Leather walls? Yeah. Bloody hell. You're aiming for Monty, the, the private of, club. The sort of feel, yeah. Rich and sumptuous and... Yeah. God. This is the uh, coach house, dining and function room. I have to say, I know I've only been here three or four minutes, it's fucking stiff, no? Do you think it's too stiff? It feels stuffy. Nigel's got a thin skin and doesn't take criticism well. We're proud of what we've done here. Uh, we get nothing but compliments about the interior of the building, the decor and everything else. He's just come in and rubbish the whole place. Not a thing here he likes. Nigel's joining me for lunch to discuss his so-called British menu. It's packed with 60 dishes from around the world. Um, do you get involved with the food at all? Yeah, I'd, I'd discuss it, obviously, with Martin. Mm -hmm. Incredibly, Nigel's fiercely proud of this silly menu. So I'm going to be brutally honest with him. I'll oh, have the shark steak topped with tomato sauce and mozzarella. OK. Must be a bit of a Hampshire thing going on there. <laughs> shark steak. Um, My starter appears to be from Africa. And this is Moroccan chicken. Yeah. Um, wrapped in filo paste. Uh, what's modern British on that? Mm. What is modern British on that? Mm. Nothing. It's very spicy, then. Oh, it's Moroccan. You seem upset. What's the matter? You seem uptight. I'm just waiting for you to slate the meal like you've slated everything else since you come in the place. Oh dear. This is Nigel's idea of a modern British classic. Cheesy shark. What was the chef smoking when we came up with that one? <laughs> Have you tried it? <laughs> I 
Well, that, that's fucking ghastly. Well, that's a surprise. Huh? <clears throat> now, don't get all defensive. I don't like it. Huh? How's your lamb? Beautiful. Honestly, really, do you think the food is good? Yeah, of course I do. You're, you're playing with me, aren't you? No, I think you're taking the piss, Gordon. That's what's happening. Sorry, shark and mozzarella. Sorry. Please. Let me go through your menu. Let's see what you put together. Oh, it's see. easier to take the piss out of other people's stuff. We're going through my menu now. The shark's half a centimetre thick. Yeah. It's cooked and then gratinated. So it's cooked twice. It arrived with a plate full of water. So the fish was overcooked before it even got anywhere near my mouth. So why are you trying to be smart? If I said to you it tasted shit, accept it. Not a great start. I want to try Nigel's favourite, fillet of beef. This is cooked by Peter. So you know, what a great experience for just 18 years old to be cooking from the best chefs in the, in the world. Maybe we should ask Nigel what I'm going to think about it before we go. I know what you're going to think you. about it before you even try. How did you find the steak? Um, it looked like someone was sick on my plate. There you go. That's fine. Um, apart from that, the steak was cooked nicely. Well, at least I could say this, you know, it can only get better from here, can't it? Uh, Christ. Yeah, definitely. Nigel's kidding himself the food is great and clearly doesn't want my advice. I just hope the head chef isn't as pompous as his boss. How are you? Good to see you. And this is... Paul. Paul, nice to see you. Hello. Peter. Peter. Hello. I had lunch with Nigel. Yeah. Sadly, very disappointing. In which way? I just found it old-fashioned, okay. very boring, and when you say modern British, yeah. where was the beef from? Where's the beef from? It's, uh, that is not British. No. The steak was cooked nicely. Yeah. Pink. It didn't need all the gunk around there. Okay. Uh, was the shark cooked okay for you? Oh, it was watery and overcooked. You thought it was overcooked? Uh, where, where's it actually well, from? Well, uh, it's a South Sea Indian Ocean, I believe. And you buy it. Guys, do you want to listen or...? Yeah, yeah. we are listening. Uh, show some respect. Yeah. Are you just going to stand no, up and piss your pants? I'm trying to have a chat, but it's... Sorry, okay, sorry, going to talk. Speak, show some fucking respect. All right? Sorry. Sorry, go on. Carry on. Can't stand up or...? What I'm trying to get through yeah. is modern British. It's hard to identify anything substantially modern British. Yeah. So I'm here to help. OK. This man hasn't understood that yet. Right. I didn't enjoy my lunch. It doesn't need to be that fancy. It's probably over the top, yeah. And it is on the verge of being pretentious, too much style and insufficient flavour. The granary is an amazing location, but everything about it is fucking wrong. The teenage asbos, they're so full of themselves, it's fucking embarrassing. The decor's flash and pretentious, and the food, well, it can't be any more further away from modern British. No wonder the fucking locals aren't coming. Entrepreneur turned restaurateur Nigel Nedu's massive restaurant is in deep financial trouble. His head chef Martin runs an apprentice scheme for out of control teenage tearaways. The granary has a capacity for 200. But on a busy night, they're serving an average of 40 people. It's unsustainable. To survive, we've got to fill this place. Now, before I do anything, I need to see if they can cope when it's busy. So tonight, I've got 90 locals coming in for dinner, and I want to see how they all handle pressure. You know, what was done 60 last night, mate? Was it 60? 61? Just me and Pete over here. And the place is capable of doing what, 200? Yeah, I think we can do that quite easily. Um, we'll see with the garden as well. There's no reason why we couldn't do more. How many hours a week, do you want? Um, this week is probably about 60 to 65. Good. Healthy. <laughs> I could call it that. <laughs> <laughs> well, the harder you work, the more fucking trouble you start up, surely. Yeah, it's, uh, it's all good, really. I need to know how head chef, come probation officer Martin and his lads cope with lots of diners. Two Moroccan chicken, two soup, one palm ham, ricotta. Martin's fiddly foreign dishes take ages to get out of the kitchen. What's the sauce, um, Martin? The prawn, sweet and sour. We're only 30 minutes into the service, and some of the food has been sent back cold. All right, Pete. So we're going to do this again. Service, please. The restaurant is filling up, but Martin is struggling to keep up with the orders. 
Come on, I need one free one for their starter, first table 14. They haven't had their starters, table 14, Bree and Quebec. We've been here since five. And we're still waiting for the We're still not working. Yeah, exactly. We know what's going on. Service has got off to a really bad start. Um, customers are complaining. There's one table there that have been waiting two hours. Food's been served twice, and um, they are really seriously pissed off. Nigel can't afford a restaurant manager and runs the front of house himself. His lack of experience is causing chaos. Boys, have you got 22 on there? I wonder if there's any chance we might get our starters. Yeah, sorry, we're having a meltdown in there. It's not Kravitz. It's not, it's a mullet. They've crossed it out, it's a mullet. This has got to be the worst day of my entire life, to be honest. What did you do to help the gentleman? We've taken his meals off the bill. Uh-huh. Been here three hours. I mean, what is the time now? I don't know. Yeah, quarter to eight. Yeah, got it at five o'clock. Right. Joking it. Martin said he could cope with 200 but I've proved he can't even cope with half of that tonight. It's never happened before. I'm not happy about it. We've been stitched up so not doing it. Dodge, I'm not doing it anymore, mate. Well, well, who's stitching who here? You can pull it back together, can't you? I really can't be bothered. I don't like this and I don't want to do it, mate. I didn't want to do it in the first place. I'm out of it. Come on, let's get this done. Uh, let's get this done. Course. We've got a lot of people in there, mate. I'm not doing it, mate. It's bollocks. What's going on? Neither Martin nor Nigel accept responsibility for the mess and want a scapegoat. Unsurprisingly, Nigel sees an opportunity to get his own back. We've been stitched up tonight. I've never been stitched up. Oh, come on, that's, that's We've dreadful. never had a fucking night like this, Gordon. That's I swear to God. Let's, 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 We've never had a night like this. Why are you shouting? Why are you shouting? Why have you done this to us? Why have I... What? Why did you do this to us tonight? We've never had a night like this, never, since we've been open. Don't be so ridiculous, will you? Shit food. Fucking red mullet frozen from Thailand. The Why fact that we're not performing, the service people. is all over the place, the customers are fucking complaining. Why did they 90 people without giving us any notice? There's still 50 who haven't even been fucking served. So what are you blaming me for this? It's Phil, the 50 haven't been served. We Don't didn't count get a chance. how many's on the service. Don't we, count and come we back. We didn't even get a chance. You're a weak man, because you just pick oh, on fuck that. fuck off, Gordon. Don't call me a weak man. You're Who a weak man. You are? Why don't you open your eyes, get your head out of your ass, and try to look at your business objectively? They clearly can't cook the existing menu. They're struggling. There's nearly 60 customers still on the board. They've barely cooked 25, 30 main courses, and all of a sudden, I'm to blame because they're busy and they're not handling it. Thankfully, Martin sees sense, and he's back in the kitchen. You can get this back.